News. I am Jared Lucky along with Mari Stein, Dwayne Garza, and Jeff Stivers here, and we are going to be interviewing some of the coaches, uh, one of the football coaches tonight and a couple of players. We're going to have the tennis coach and a player on later on, and also this evening we are going to have uh, Mr. Sylvan Mangold on later on in the program, so stick around with us for our community corner, and he'll be on here later on. Um, but first of all, we're going to get going with uh, with Coach Omar Moreno. Uh, Coach, thank you for being on with us here this evening. We, we appreciate you coming out. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. And uh, you are, what, what coach are you with the team? Uh, I'm the uh, secondary coach. I specialize with the cornerbacks. Okay. Okay. Um, Big win Friday night at Lockhart, especially after that long lightning delay. Kind of describe how you kept your team ready to go through that delay. Well, we've had a couple of delays this year, so yeah. we kind of had a little experience with it. Um, going into Lockhart, we knew it was going to be one of those kind of hard-fought, you know, games, and the kids were real resilient. I mean, I know this delay was a little longer than the one we saw in the past. So um, we, uh, we had a long kind of delay we tried to get them some bananas to keep them going you know because i know they around that time they were getting pretty hungry <laughs> so um but other than that, no, we, we we were prepared for them they're a tough team you know they had some athletes in the backfield and uh the boys just like i said just stayed resilient and uh, were able to pull out a tough one speaking of a tough game you got another one coming up this week uh champion losing 30 to 27 uh to kerrville tyvee last week and they're they're no slouch coming in here i know we beat them here last year um do they have a lot of the same team they had a, a year ago, or do they have a lot, some different things? Uh, the skill positions are a little different. I know wide receiver-wise, talking from my guys in the secondary, we're going to see a lot of the same guys there. Um, the two slot receivers are both returning starters, um, so uh, our guys are pre prepared for that. Um, also on the uh, other side, I think their record doesn't kind of define who they are. I know they're 2-2 two and two right now, but they're a really good football team, and uh, we're expecting them to come for revenge this year, honestly. Um, I, I know that they were probably, you know, circled our game on their calendar and looking to uh, to come over here and kind of spoil our at our home field. But I think the boys are well prepared. I think we're we're ready for anything that they throw at us. And and they're they're going to throw a little more than anyone you've seen so far this year. Correct? Absolutely, yes. And, and that's what uh, I think it's funny that we actually have the second guy, secondary guys here today because it, it's a big challenge for us this week. Uh, uh, Dante and Chris are returning stars that you guys are going to talk to in a minute. Uh, I tell them all the time. They probably played their best game against Champion last year. Um, uh, we had a, quite a few turnovers against them and everything, but uh, you know they, they, they know it's a new year, new quarterback. Uh, he's a tough one. You know we've seen him on film. Uh, I know he's a Division One baseball player. I think he's going to TC or something. So he's a good athlete, um, and we're just prepared for uh, anything he can throw at us. I know you don't have much to do with your with the special teams, but it was one of your defensive backs that kind of sealed it for the Panthers with the return on the two-point conversion, which turned a one-score game into two scores. You know, that, that's that got to carry over to this week. But, you know, you're, you're going to see uh, 42, Mr. Henry, that we're going to talk to. He's going to be on an island all night by himself, as he usually is out there. You know, to have confidence knowing that you're going to go up with against the same receiver that you saw the year before, that, that's got to show some tendencies of how you line up on defense, right? Absolutely. Well, starting off with the first part of what you said, um, yeah, I mean, it was uh, Dante. Is, is, we asked a lot out of Dante. And honestly, we asked a lot of, out of the corners. Uh, we're probably one of the only single high safety teams in our, in our area. We play a lot of three deep zone. So uh, we have a center for a player, and the corners are usually always on the island. Um, and, uh, you know, we practice a lot on, on covering, you know, four verticals and stuff like that. But Dante is always up for the challenge. I know every team we faced last year up into this year, we line them up against the best receiver on the team. And, and, and uh, uh, Dante welcomes the challenge a lot of the time. When you say, and this is just for the listening crowd out there, sure. when you say single safety, explain to the people that are listening that don't understand because when we went to school, you had two cornerbacks, you had two safeties. Now you have six linebackers, and you know it, it's it's crazy. So explain the scheme, of what you mean by one one safety over the top. Sure, uh, a lot of teams out uh, they usually run uh, what you call a cover two system, where uh, corners will play uh, hard on the receivers and have uh, you know jam them and have the funnel them to the safety, which kind of push them to the safety and have hope over the top. 
Uh, our scheme, uh, what we like to do is, you know, we like to keep six in the box as far as linebackers and D linemen and everybody we face. So our goal is to stop the run first. That, that's that's really what Coach Moe's uh, main priority is to stop the run. And our guys in the back end, you know, we, we've got to cover the pass with, you know, honestly with three guys that we have back there. You know, uh, we have a couple of rovers that play the curl flat area. Uh, but mainly, you know, our center field guy, um, starting with Maj, Majlin, Cole Majlin, uh, he plays the center field. He's got to cover from hash to hash, and the corner's got to cover from numbers to hash. So, um, uh, but yeah, we, we we're a single high team, so usually there's just one guy in the middle. Um, you know, for you baseball fans, I was kind of like just having a center field player in the back end and, and playing the deep zone back there. And if you're a softball player, it's kind of like being the rover. You go wherever you're needed as far as in the secondary. And I know we had the other coach, Moreno, on two weeks ago when we when he brought his defensive line, and they shown against Hondo. I mean, they just completely shut him down. We're going to put you on the spot now. Do you see the same thing coming with your secondary? Are we going to see a – and I know you can't completely shut them down. They're going to get one or two on you. Are they are are they ready? And that that that's the biggest deal with with the what I teach the guys is you know the most important play is the next play. Um, we're in a different uh, world of football these days that you know we we are we know we're going to give up a play here and there. Uh, the main thing is we we want to make sure we don't give up six points. Uh, so if the boys you know if they give up a big play they make sure to make a sure tackle. And uh, our motto is we live to play another down. In other words, so uh, um, but yeah, going to our D line. I mean, we'll talk. I, I know. Our defensive coaches will talk to the blue in the face. That is the anchor of our defense right now. Our defensive line is, is, is they have been they have been everything this year to us. And, and going back to the Hondo game, I mean they dominated that game, the line of scrimmage, and and, and, and it helps out everyone, everywhere, yep. you know. So um, I know they're ready to go this week. Uh, they're welcome to challenge. Like I said, the quarterback is he's good. He's a great runner. You know, he's a downhill runner. And I know the, the D-line and our linebackers are welcome in that challenge this well, week. And that's going to be one of the keys probably is how uncomfortable can you make him when he does throw. If they can get in his face, that's going to help your secondary out a lot. Yes, sir. Uh, I, going back to last year, you guys mentioned the game last year. I think the biggest thing last year was uh, third downs. You know, uh, we were able to get off the field on third downs, and uh, they weren't able to get us off the field on third downs. So I think that's another key stat this week is just, you know, I've been preaching to the guys about, hey, we got to get off the field on third downs. You know, we can't give them another sticks. You know, we got to get off the field. So I know last year a lot of times you had them in third and long, and that was, you know, that was a big plus. And to get back to the Hondo game two weeks ago, we talked about the defensive line a bunch, but the secondary didn't give up anything either. And whenever Hondo tried to throw the ball, it was non-existent. And what we saw is in the second half is the defensive line was interchangeable. They were putting in four or five new guys, and that was the same as in the secondary. So a game like that has got to help. I know against Lockhart, we didn't have the opportunity to get some of the younger guys in there because it was always – a close game. How much do those games mean to a coach when you can get in the extra players in there and, and oh, see action? The experience is great. You know, them just getting in the game, getting the feel of how the speed of the game is. Um, so, yeah, those those games are big plus to us because we're able to stick them in there and, and let them see how the game flows and let them see how routes are run. That way, you know, God willing, you know, it doesn't happen. But if someone happens to go, you know, need to take a playoff or an injury or something, those guys behind them are ready to go. You know, I know Coach Souza preaches that in our program. It's next man up. You know, we, we, we're supporting each other. So, you know, but, yeah, those games are great for us because it lets the kids get some experience. And uh, when they're ready to go, they're ready to go. Yep. Thank you. Yep. And uh, also one of the things, you know, we mentioned that Bernie's probably going to throw more than any team you face this year. When you, when you face a lot of teams that run the football, especially the way Lockhart runs the football, how does your planning have to change week to week? Because that's that's a huge difference for a secondary coach to have yes. to change your your planning yes, on that. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, Lockhart game was uh, just something. And if you guys looked at our scheme, we actually took a defensive back off the field the entire game. We had three only. Um, so it, you know, it is scheme wise. You know, you got to look at what you're facing. You got to look at the tendencies. Uh, we knew Lockhart probably wasn't going to throw the football as much as we've seen. So uh, we, we made a decision to take one off the field and bring in another, you know, run stopper and uh, put it on the guys to cover with three, you know. And, and I think we did a pretty good job of that. I know we gave up one play in the flat, 
uh, and it was about maybe a 15 yard gain and yep. for those for those uh, teams like that it's 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 kind of a struggle because you don't want to give them those plays because then they get a new set of downs you know um the lock card game with us and them it, it's it's kind of one of those possession by possession games because you're not going to get too many possessions no so you got to take advantage of it and uh the second half I believe we had a, a three or four three and outs, which was great yep. for us because, you know, in those type of games, you don't know if you're going to get the ball back because both teams are ver running the ball, controlling the clock. Um, so getting off on third downs in those games, three and outs is good for us. Yeah, and like you said, uh, Lockhart's opening possession took six and a half minutes off the clock. Like you said, you know, that it's going to run down in a hurry. And then Mari and I were sitting there going, you know, we'll be home by 11 o'clock. And then here we had the lightning delay. We yes, started sir. playing again until 10.05. Yes, <laughs> We even commented about the, the possession time, and when uh, Chris run the two point conversion back, I looked at Jared and said, "This ball game's over because they're not going they're not going to get the ball back to score twice." That's, that's a that and, and they they don't did. harp on the officials, but they were off sides. I'm sorry, both of them were off sides on that play. We should have got a first down. They should have <laughs> never even got the ball back. Yeah, well, that was a big play, definitely when uh, when Mazin blocked the extra point and Chris took it back. Making it a two-possession game is a big difference in those type of games right there. Um, you know, so we were able to play a little bit more careful defense, uh, making sure nothing was big plays, you know, and, and you know, but getting the two-possession of those games, again, like you said, not that we were thinking the game was over, but we knew having a little bit of two-possession game was a little different, you know, so we were able to just, you know, read our keys the next series on defense and just make sure we didn't give up a big play. Yeah, and uh, like you said, when, when, when you have a team that, doesn't have the offense the capability to score quickly um, that that really hurts you when it's a two possession game and there's four minutes left and as you could see they didn't really know how to hurry up and, and play the football game we, we noticed that from from the booth and uh, fortunately one and0 in district moving on to, to, to Bernie champion I know you know we like to talk about the game that just happened right. but we're moving on to the next week well, that's the thing we, we, we preach on being one and0 every week you know we don't really want to look at every other game we played so when uh, we, what we do on defense on Mondays, we squash the week before, you know, uh, and we say, hey, we want to be one and zero this week, you know, so we're focused and moving forward on the next opponent we have. Well, yep. and the positive thing, coaches, you've had three one and zero weeks in a row, and you know, when you come in, when you play, going to play Bernie, and you're on a winning streak, the confidence is there, and and the the crowds that Medina Valley's had here lately in the last couple of years have just been tremendous. I mean, the, the, the electricity is back. It's, you can feel it. It's back when, the way it used to be. When you have a two-hour delay and you come back and your stands are still 95% full, uh, and that's that. I completely agree with you, and, and I think it's great at home. I, I, going back to week two when we played Bernie, had that delay, and, uh, you know, Bernie's fans, I don't know if they just didn't come back, but our fans all came back after that delay, and 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 I know our boys feed off the crowd's energy. Um, so that's one thing I like to talk to the Panther Nation about about being there this Friday, because I know the boys feed off of their energy, and and, and it helps us so much. Um, going back to last year's playoff game, you know, it, it, the atmosphere was amazing, and and um, I, I haven't been here as long as you guys. So you say it's back to the old ways. Well, well I hope so. You know, get the, our boys are striving for that. We want to have the community behind us. I know the boys just love it. You know, they love to hear the roar of the crowd. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll see that Friday. All right. Thank you, Coach, for being on. And if uh, y'all stay with us, we're going to have uh, some of the secondary players on here. We're going to take a quick break and come back. You are listening to Sports for Supper with Sammy at Sammy's at uh, on the Medina Valley Broadcast Network, and we'll be back in just a moment. At North Park Chevrolet in Casterville, we offer the most exceptional experience in sales and service. Shop our large new and pre-owned selection with complimentary maintenance on new vehicles, upfront posted pricing, 10-day trade-in appraisal guarantee, and a 48-hour return policy. Our factory trained technicians will take care of you after the sale with easy menu pricing, courtesy vehicles, and a complimentary car wash with every service. Come see us at 1955 Highway 90 East or call 210-640-3184. Shop us online or schedule service at npchevy.com. Experience Chevrolet, the North Parkway. Headed out to the game? Then make a stop at your local Valley Mart convenience store. With 12 area locations, Valley Mart is always right around the corner. Fuel yourself and your vehicle with quality branded gas and diesel, snacks, and fountain drinks. 
always convenient, well lit with clean restrooms. Valley Mart, family owned and operated since 1984 and a proud supporter of Medina Valley Athletics and area youth sports for over 30 years. One, two, three, hit. More coverage of your high school teams. Let's just say we keep it real. And you know this, man. This is the KMAX Sports Network. You're watching Medina Valley Sports. <laughs> this is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Welcome back here to Sammy's Restaurant. We are live here, and I, I want to take this chance to thank Sammy's Restaurant for letting us have this show here every week and making it possible. I also want to thank uh, uh, IMS Metal Fabrications and Lacoste for making it possible for us to be on here also this evening. Uh, we just had a good interview with Coach Moreno, and now we've got some of the secondary on. We have uh, Dante Henry, Chris Lopez, and Brenton Romo uh, all playing in the secondary for Medina Valley. Uh, guys, thanks for, for being here tonight, and we'll, we'll start on the end with, with Dante. Um, Dante, what, what year are you in school? Oh, I'm a senior. You're a senior, and what position do you play? I play cornerback. Cornerback, and what what is your job as the cornerback? Explain to everyone kind of what your initial job is on the field. Well, you do a few different things. You could be on an island by yourself, or you could be maintaining your own zone, making sure you're, everything's staying maintained. It just depends. You mainly have pass. And you're going to have a tough one this week with Bernie Champion, a team that's going to going to test you and throw the ball a little more than everybody else. Uh, what are your, what are your thoughts on the game coming up? Uh, I'm not too worried. The <laughs> You had, you had a good game last year against them. Um, they have a different quarterback, and we changed our scheme to go off of like most of the routes. So we're we're prepared for what they have to throw at us. So I'm pretty confident. All right, on passing game. Um, last week against Lockhart, a team that ran, ran the ball a lot. Um, you're changing a lot of what you have to do from game to game, mm -hmm. going from a team that runs consistently to a team that's going to kind of balance it out and throw and run. Yes, um, how, do you, how do you prepare for something like that? What, what's the mindset going into that? Well, um, every week we do the same drills. We just switch it around for the different team. So we get prepared like pretty much the same way every week. We just switch it around for the team. And well, um, a running the pass. Well, I'm just always prepared for the pass regardless. So yeah. nothing really changes for me. Yes, we we've been keying the the near back next to the quarterback. We then like if he motions across or running certain plays, like we we've noticed most of that, but most of the time you can tell by their attitude how they're coming at you, like if they're going to block you or they're running a route. So you've got to be prepared regardless. And uh, do, you, do you play any other sports besides football? I play basketball and I run track. Basketball and track? Uh, what do you run in track? What I do the 110 hurdles. Awesome. Um, you got any more yeah, questions? I have a question. Yeah. When, when you know that you're on an island out there, your mindset – if he's running a fly down the field, your mindset is to get your body in position to where you force him out of bounds to where he can't make the sh make the catch inside. But who who makes the, who makes the call on the defensive side of the ball what the coverage is in the secondary, or is it set, or do y'all set it as you see them lining up, or is there somebody? Is Modulin making the calls? Yeah. Is, is Snyder making the calls? Who makes the calls for we the have secondary? A, we have a set call from the coach when we go out there, but when we see them line out, Modge will tell us like. Well, if we need a change, so everything's on him. Like we gotta listen to him. And trust so him. He, he he's the one that'll make the call. So if something goes wrong, you, you can blame number twelve for the. Oh, I'm not gonna fall. No, I'm just. <laughs> I'm, 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 no, I'm just giving you a hard time. But uh, what position you play in basketball? I'm a point guard. Oh, you like to shoot the rock? I'm not too good at it, but I try. That's all right. <laughs> that's, hey, that's what it's all about. Mm. So, what what is the player number that you're gonna be covering the most? I'm not sure. They've been mixing around a lot. I just know all of them are tall, so I'm not too worried about what the number is. Are they taller I, than you? They're taller than me. Oh, boy. No, I'm just – because I make sure I'm, I'm running as fast as I can. They're Garrett Leggett tall? I'm Garrett Leggett tall. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, thanks, thank you. Dante, for being on. And now we're going to move over to uh, Chris Lopez. Uh, Chris, what, what grade are you in school? Uh, I'm a senior. You're a senior also. Yes, um, what position do you play? Uh, I play corner. You play on the other side? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Okay. Um, you you had a big 
play last week against Lockhart. Tell us a little bit of what you were thinking when you saw that ball rolling around and what was going through your head. No, I was just I was mostly thinking, like, just to pick up the ball. Like, I know, like, as it's rolling, like, you know, like, in the time, like, it's hard to, like, pick it up. But, you know, I was like, I tried focusing in on the ball and just getting it. So I was happy that I got it. And, of course, I was happy I got the two points for the team. So Well, we, we talked in the booth when we saw that. And, you know, a lot of times they teach the defense just to fall on the ball. But in that situation, you fall on it, the play is dead. Uh, we were talking about how you had the presence of mind just to, to know to pick the ball up and run it back because otherwise they're, they're still kicking off to you. And that play just made it. That was a, that was a huge play in the game to make it two possessions. Yes, sir. Um, all right, so you're on the you're on the other side. Um, do y'all do y'all kind of line up on the same side every time, or do y'all switch around depending on the formation? Um, it just depends, you know. Like week to week, there's different receivers. So I mean, like coach, um, he analyzes like the different receivers, like what they're good at. And but for the most part, we pretty much stay on our own side. But it, it basically ranges. It depends on like who he wants us covering more. But usually, we're just on our own side. Okay. So the strong side. It's usually the side with the tight end, correct? Yes, sir. So who goes to that side if y'all keep it consistent? Um, usually the corners aren't focused on tight ends. It's usually like our rovers more or like um, our bandits, like our other safeties. So usually they're keying the tight end, but um, the corners usually stay like on their own sides. It doesn't matter which side the tight uh, end is at. That's no, somebody sir. else's? Yes, sir. All and, right. and what other sports do you play? Uh, I mostly just run track. I played basketball freshman year, but um, last year and the years before I just ran track. And what, what do you run in track? What what events uh, do you do? I did the 4x1 and like the 100 and 200. Okay. So how many times are you going to be out there this Friday night and thinking, oh, man, this is my time to be out on an island? Are you going to be on an island as much as Dante, or, or does that change according to the coverage that y'all are at? Or uh, In other words, who, who is going to get the most – I mean, it just, single coverage. It just depends, like how they line up. Like usually, like it just depends what what side the trips is on. It looks like they're more heavy, like on his side. Like he'll be on the island more, but it ranges. Like they switch it up a lot and everything. But I mean, for the most part, he's probably going to be on by himself. But I think we're prepared for that. So they're going to line up with trips sometimes. And that's mm-hmm. my other question. When you're in the stands, a lot of people don't understand. They line three of them out wide, and a lot of times there's just two defenders. Yes. that are out there who's responsible what is the responsibilities of the two out there and who is supposed to come in and help when there's trips out there and you have two defensive backs in the coverage um, on our trips we have our one high safety in the back so he's usually um, helping out like in the middle or like over the top of everything and like the corners um, always have deep and then our other guy that's down there the rover he like he's in charge of like all the flats so like we each have like our own separate zone so like usually um, we just run zone to um, trips, so each of us has like a separate job and role. And the rover, that's usually a defensive back also? Um, for the most part, yeah, they're mostly run support first, but um, we also use them for pass. So like they're, they're pretty big in uh, trips because like the corners and the safety, we basically go off of them because we need them like to jam the receivers like in the front to like give us like a good chance to in case they throw deep. What percentage do they run where, where y'all are going to see trips? Um, for the most part, whenever they run trips, it's not too heavy on pass. It just depends, like, what they do in the backfield, like motion or a sniffer or anything. But usually it's mostly run, but we're getting prepared for the pass, too, because we're probably going to see some new things. But is that sure. their common setup on offense is uh, trips? Yeah, they run spread and trips a lot, so we're going to be seeing different things between, like, twins and trips. So communication is going to be really big. Yes, sir. All right. Coach, you got your work cut out. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, Chris, for, for being here. And uh, we'll move on to, to Brenton Romo. And Brenton, uh, you're what, what grade are you? I'm a senior. And what's your position? Cornerback also. Oh, okay. <laughs> all cornerbacks. <laughs> we got all cornerbacks. Okay. Um, all right. So you got two corners here. What what is what is your job on the field? Um, same as I'm just their backup. So if anything happens, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm there in the back. But y'all y'all get rotated in a lot. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, y'all y'all get rotated in a lot, and um, also, I mean, staying prepared because I mean, there's there's going to be times where they're going to, like they said, they're going to show you some different things. What happens when they come out and show you five wide receivers and nobody in the backfield? You know, you you're going to have to start subbing in different people and different backs that's and right. stuff, and that that's going to be big key. Staying prepared for that. Are you guys on special teams also? No, I'm on kickoff. Yes, sir. So. And, and I'm not 
you're not a backup as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. It's, it's like Coach Mo said, it, it, the next guy up is, is in line. Yep. And you're out there quite a bit also. So, you know, it, it's not, you know, you may fill in for one or the other, but when you fill in on Dante's side, do you know that, that you're going to be more on an island than if you set up or, or you're in the place of Chris's? Yeah, I mean, the coaches have prepared us for anything, any uh Anything that happens, I'm on Dante's side. I'm, I'm ready for that high life. I'm on Chris's side. I'm ready for trips. I'm ready for anything. The coaches prepare us very well. And I, I think the other young man that, that switches out there with you all sometimes is Tanner. Tanner Bipper. Bipper yes, is out there. Now, he's not a senior this year, right? He's no, an sir. underclassman. He's a, he's a junior, yeah. Okay. But, but you played on the varsity last year, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like this is just your first year. You were part of it last year. And you got you were in there last year also. But on, on special teams, what are you – are you the gunner on the kickoffs, or what are you on special teams? Uh, yeah, I'm on kickoff. Uh, I was in the middle. I was number six. That was my favorite position because they like to run it down the middle a lot, and I just I love being there and just tackling them. So <laughs> six, what do you, for the people who listen out there, what do you mean by you're six? I'm just dead center in the middle right next to the kicker. Okay. So you right. just go, and you're the attack guy. Yes, sir. So when you when you're out there Friday night, and you get the sign from Coach Moreno, and he calls the play, and, and does it sometimes think, you look at the alignment, you think, did he just call it? What, what we thought? Do you ever second guess your coach? Uh, the coaches mainly know exactly what they're talking about. I trust them. Well, you should because they do a great job. Uh, my other question, you just on the kickoff, so you on the punt? I'm on punt also. Yeah, I'm a gunner on punt. So... You're on the outside, and you're yeah. the first guy. Yes, you, you usually face a double team. What's the move you you make the most to get through the double team? I mean, I'm I'm really fast, so I usually just cut out uh, inside, then go outside, and then they usually tend to fall or something like that. So is there a lot of hand fighting going on? Uh, yeah, it depends if they're aggressive or not, but I usually fight it off. It looks like this Friday you won't have much weather to compete with, so maybe you can really dig in to get down there. Sorry, hopefully. Hopefully, it didn't slow you down too much. It sounds like it didn't. So. <laughs> well, I hope we see him a lot when he's in the number six position <laughs> more than when, when we see him on the outside because yeah. that means we're, we're doing right. a good job <laughs> exactly yes, and guys what's the what's the confidence level coming in to this game after first district win oh, we're, all, we're all pumped we've all played music we're all just having a good time we're really excited really excited perfect warm-up song what is it no <laughs> yeah don't try it on me i guess my <laughs> coach Murdo. That's a good song. Um, do you play any other sports? I do track, and I'm you, planning on doing swimming this year. Okay. Oh, swim, you're going to do swimming. Great. Yeah, we, we learned when, when uh, Superintendent Rohrbach was here that that was a new thing that they were bringing in. I think so, yeah. I mean, it depends if we're still on. Uh, uh, I mean, I've, <laughs> I haven't done water. anything. <laughs> yeah, in the water, basically. I mean, uh, my stamina is probably going to be pretty good, so probably some of the longer races and whatnot. Yep. Uh, guys, thank you all for being here. Good luck this week thank coming up. We, we appreciate you all being here. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a break, and then we'll be back with the tennis coach. Uh, you're listening to our uh, sports show here at Sammy's, and we will return in just a moment. Great job, guys. Thank you. Hey, great job. Good luck, young man. Facebook. Like us, and you'll always get the latest on Panther sports and news from MVBN. Security State Bank has one simple goal, to be the best bank possible to the families and businesses of South Texas. We believe in superior customer service, active community involvement, fair and honest business ethics, and loyalty. We've been in Castorville for a year now, and we've enjoyed growing with you. Come by 1726 Highway 90 East, or call us at 830-538-9898. A real person will answer, because that's how we do business, with common courtesy and uncommon service. Bank online at securitystbk.com. Security State Bank, South Texas. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. From the time our alarm clock rings in the morning to when we turn the lights off at night, Electricity plays an important role in our lives. But most of the time, we don't even think about it. And you don't have to, because the employees at Medina Electric Cooperative are behind the scenes making sure you get reliable, affordable electricity delivered to your house or business. Your cooperative is here for you, and we have been since 1938. Connect with Medina Electric on Facebook, Twitter, or at medinaec.org. From West Texas all the way to the bio and all points in between. I saw miles and miles of Texas 
Well, this is the KMAC Sports Network, bringing your teams to you. You're watching Medina Valley Sports. This is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Welcome back here to Sammy's Restaurant. Um, a big thanks to them for making it possible for us to be on here and bring you these shows. Uh, we just talked to the uh, football coach and, and some of the players, and now we're going to move on to, to tennis. And before, we, before we move on from football real quick, Jared, I just want to share something with everyone out there. Uh, one of our football players, Grant Snyder, is up for Player of the Week. So uh, if y'all can go out there and go to texas.vipe, and vipe is V-Y-P-E dot com, texas.vipe.com. Um, he's up for uh, Player of the Week with 15 tackles and two of them for losses. So if you all want to get out there and vote for him, and we may be able to get to on the website where we can get a link. I've shared it. It's on the Facebook page. It's been shared. Okay. It's, it, yeah, it's been shared. So, okay. So, good. So, if you can get out there and vote for Grant. And also, uh, Cameron did win Player of the Week to Cameron Griggs for volleyball. So, she got oh, wow. Player of the Week. Uh, hopefully, we helped her out with that, and she deserved it. She's doing a great job for the volleyball team. So now we're going to move on to tennis a little bit here. So um, today we have today we have uh, Coach Samantha Reinhardt with us, and we're going to talk a little bit about tennis. Um, welcome to the show, Coach. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. So um, where are we right now in the season? Um, so we're actually in about our third or fourth week. Um, we've had actually a couple of delays, um, so we had to have a match rescheduled. Um, so we've got about three matches left um, to put us uh, at the end of the fall season. So let me back up a little bit, too. So how long have you been coaching Medina Valley? So uh, this is my second year this at Medina Valley. This is your second year. Okay, mm -hmm. so well, you just came out of a tough district, and you're into another <laughs> district now. Yeah. Uh, from what I understand, the last couple of years are pretty tough. That the, the competition, that district we just came out, was at a high level. I mean, some of those players went on to play Division One tennis, didn't they? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's been extremely challenging. I mean, last year uh, we played Dripping Springs, and they had a girl committed. She's a junior, and she was already committed to uh, Texas A&M uh, wow. to play D1 tennis. So, I mean, uh, when you're dealing with schools like Alamo Heights and, you know, Kerrville Tyvee and Bernie Champion, I mean, those are high-level tennis programs um, with, you know, kids that have been playing tennis, um, you know, since they were in elementary school. Um, you know, and they have middle school tennis programs, which is something that we don't have, which is something we're trying to work towards, um, which is a big deal when it, it really in tennis, it's kind of like uh, if you haven't been, it really time of playing makes such a huge difference with tennis. And so, um, yeah, we're happy to be in a district that we're a little more competitive in. Um, you know, we're a two and two right now, so um, we're hoping to get a win. Uh, this week, actually tomorrow against Southwest Legacy. It is tomorrow. So right now we're in fall tennis. Yes. And, and the difference between fall tennis and spring tennis is? So um, fall tennis is a team tennis tournament, so a tournament style. So essentially um, Medina Valley is going to play a specific school. And uh, the way it works is you play 19 matches. So um, the... Um, girls singles and boys doubles there are six matches there are uh, boys doubles and girls doubles and there are three matches of those and then there is one mixed doubles and that's kind of like the tiebreaker match so basically um, when you have a match against another school um, essentially once one team wins 10 matches it's technically over because you played 10 matches Mm -hmm. um, now you can play out like we normally end up playing out all of the matches uh, you know just to see how it kind of turns out and to give the kids the experience so like for example um, you know last week we played Southwest and we had won the match you know we had gotten to our 10 match mark but we ended up playing out all of our matches so our final score ended up being uh, 15 to 4. Okay so everyone got to get their match in. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay so for the first the first team to, to 10 wins wins the match and the matches consist of six girls singles, six boys singles, and three girls double teams and three boys double team, and then a mixed. Right. Okay. Mixed doubles team. Yes. Okay, great. And so far, so you started out with Floresville, is that correct? Yes. And that, and that was a win? No, we actually lost that one okay, by so one. Okay, so that's right. You did. Okay. That's yeah, sorry. it was super unfortunate because we were we, like, yeah. we were almost there and we really should have won it. Um, 
our boys were really struggling that match. Um, our girls totally carried the team, and they did, did they a really? really amazing job. Um, we've act we have a really, really strong girls team this year. You know, no offense to the boys or anything. <laughs> <laughs> so we lost against Floresville, and that was followed up by Somerset. Mm -hmm. And we won against Somerset. Yeah, yeah. I misread my notes here. No, so you did okay. win against no, Somerset. Okay. Yeah, we beat Somerset. And that was uh, 10 wins to 1? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we actually probably would have finished out, and we probably would have had more wins on that. But it actually started raining, like, right when we got our 10th win. So we were like... Peace well, out, it, Somerset. <laughs> well, and it, and it looks like uh, the the boys picked up a little slack at Somerset. Is yes, that correct? Yes, they did. Yes, okay, they good. Did. I, I show uh, we had three of the of the doubles. Yeah, the doubles boys. definitely swept okay, on that. Great. One. Actually, I think everybody pretty much. And the swept girls on did too. One. So the girls mm -hmm. double. I see three wins for them. The boys double three wins for them. Yeah, and so you also had a mixed doubles with the with the oh yeah. Win too. Um, um, Allie and Tyler and our mixed doubles team is probably one of our strongest teams that we have. They're. Uh, absolutely fantastic so so and then after somerset <coughs> uh, y'all played southwest was that just southwest or southwest legacy uh, that was just southwest that was just so southwest. we have legacy this uh, tomorrow okay so and y'all won that match 15 mm -hmm. to 4 yes sir and y'all looks like y'all had the uh, pretty good success with that also with your with all your teams yes sir yes sir absolutely and then was it last weekend uvalde so it was supposed to be last weekend we actually ended up canceling that match due to rain uh, we were actually supposed to play uvalde and ep win um but we kind of canceled a little Im a little mature immaturely and uh, we kind of now we had to reschedule it for monday and we're actually gonna have to play ep win on saturday so we've actually got so much so going you have on this thursday week. monday saturday yeah we, and, and so normally we wouldn't have that because um you know uil doesn't want you playing multiple matches like that but since they were reschedules um you have to do like the next available date um which is why we had to do monday for uvalde and we had to make arrangements with ep win when we actually got to uvalde on monday uh, to figure out when we were going to set our next match a lot of getting out of school isn't it uh, actually, not really. Oh, really? Um, so tennis matches actually start in the afternoon. Okay. Uh, so we normally leave at the end of sixth period. So they only actually miss one period. So we, we try to we try to we try to limit the getting out because in the spring we're out all day. <laughs> well, yeah, and I was talking about how much y'all are out there. So it, it's basically year round because you have a fall Absolutely. schedule and and you have a spring schedule. Mm -hmm. When when do y'all actually start? Do y'all is it like the other sports like football? Do y'all start in August? Um. Yeah. Actually. So. Um, most of the time we kind of we try to start like the week before school starts um, but actually this year um, we actually started two or three weeks before school started uh, when we just kind of had some optional practices so we said hey if anybody wants to come out and start the season early and i think we had the majority of our team out there especially our varsity out there practicing and i think that really tremendously helped us out um, we also all summer do um, open courts on Wednesdays. So those are days where we just have the courts open. We put balls out for the kids and we just let them come out. We open it up to the community uh, for um, families to come out and hit. And we had oh, full wow. courts every Wednesday, 6.30 to 8. Um, and we do that all summer long. So our kids were hitting all summer. So you've got the facilities now to do that. Is that correct? I mean, we've really upgraded over there. And is it everything you expected it to be? Oh, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, having um, having the amount of courts that we have, we have nine courts, you know, we have five up at the high school right. and then four over in front of the middle school. And I mean, uh, you know, some teams that we play against, like, you know, for instance, Somerset, they only have three courts to work with. And I couldn't imagine um, what that must be like because even even with us with our nine courts like it can still be challenging like uh, we're actually our total um, Team right now. We're up to 54. Wow Yeah, it is. Um, we actually you got 54 students. Yes participating this year. Yeah. Wow Yeah, which is tough because you know for um, for tennis, you know, you can run um, a, my, my varsity has uh, well this year we've got um, eight and eight, so eight boys, eight girls. Um, but sometimes we pull up nine and ten, um, you know, in case we need extras or, um, you know, in case other, um, you know, say somebody can't do make it or maybe somebody, um, you know, somebody doesn't want to play singles this week. We, you know, bring in our nine and ten. So uh, we have all of our kids kind of listed in kind of order. And so if you're at a certain level then that puts you on varsity. So in this fall, we can hold a lot of kids. Um, in the spring, we have run like a JV of varsity and a freshman Because it's individual, team. more individual. Right. Uh, so, go ahead. I've got a question. Ex explain, okay, so you win a match 10 
10 0, let's just say. Mm -hmm. And so you're 1 and 0. Is that how that works? You get yes. a win and a loss? Yes. So uh, my question is, is how does that work going forward? Like you win district, you go to regional. Uh, can you do that twice in a year because you've got team and then individual? Yes. Okay. Yes, we can. So um, I believe the next step, um, so I think they take for tennis, we do the top three teams uh, go to area, I okay. think is the next step. Um, so you, there is team tennis area and then, of course, team, uh, team tennis state. So... Um, and then you do it all over again in the spring where, where you can advance also. Yeah, so in the spring it works a little bit differently. So in the spring um, you can have, uh, so the kids actually can play both in the fall. They can play both a doubles match and a singles match in the same game. Um, however, in the fall, because it's individual tennis, the kids can only pick one thing to play. So, for example, um, you know, Allie plays singles and uh, mixed doubles Mix. and you know uh, Max plays um, you know can play singles and doubles so in the spring they would have to pick one okay okay so, so what whatever they kind of work with better and so I can run two singles players two doubles teams and two mixed doubles teams so I have a total of eight kids so eight boys and eight girls on a you know full varsity team. So do you so since you have two seasons, do you approach each season different as far as practice goes, or do you kind of keep it the same, or do you treat them two different things and practice two different ways? Um, so in the fall, um, in the fall, you're kind of having to. So one fall starts so fast um, that really we're just trying to get as many hits in as possible and getting the kids working with both singles and doubles because they're you know they're playing. Um, you know both types because there's different strategies for playing singles and playing doubles because your court's different um, when you're playing singles compared to when you're playing doubles and plus it's different having a different you know another person on the court with you so there's all kinds of different so tactics and strategies do you have to make in other words you make the team in the fall and you, and you stay on the team or, do, or is there two different trial periods um so what we kind of do is um so our because our fall tennis looks a little bit different than um, spring tennis, um, we kind of use the fall to kind of see where people are going to fit best for the spring. Okay, great. So like, you know, Allie, for instance, um, her and Tyler make an amazing mixed, you know, double. mixed doubles team. So they're probably going to play mixed doubles in the fall, uh, you know, in the spring and not play singles. Even though they're both very excellent singles players, they work together better as a mixed doubles team. Yeah, and that's kind of what you have to do. You have to determine where you best utilize yeah, each, and each player. Yeah, and, you know, that's, that's really the challenging part is figuring out, you know, which pairings work with each other, you know, who can't work with people and who need to, you know, be better at singles and then, you know, filling in those spots. Luckily, in the fall, in the spring, because it's an individual, so it's an individual tournament, so we don't just play another school. There are multiple schools. So, um, for example, most tournaments can hold between eight, to up to 18 teams at a single tournament and so um, you have at some points depending on how big the tournament is you can actually bring extras with you so like you know maybe we could run three singles players or three doubles teams or you know you have a little more flexibility because you're not really like counting um, counting matches like you yeah. are in um, in the fall so we had a couple of rainouts, right yes okay now do those get made up if they are district, yes. So like, um, uh, I see Harlan. We haven't played Harlan. We have yet. Was not that played one, that Harlan. Was one of the that was rained out, and so we've actually rescheduled that to October the sixth. And Floresville was the other rain out, or um, Floresville did not get rained out. We actually got rained out on Divine. On Divine. Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. So we're way down here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So um, it won't be long before this season is winding down, isn't it? Yeah. We're actually gonna have to. Um, I haven't talked to Hondo yet, but we probably need to cancel our match since we're going to have to do a rescheduled match. Um, and ha the Hondo is in a district It's not a match. district. And that, that you finish out the season October 10th at schedule for Hondo, and that's when you're going to try to do a remake? Mm-hmm. And, Coach, who, who helps you? Who are some of your assistant coaches that help um, you out? So I have one assistant coach. Uh, his name is Travis Campbell. He's uh, new to Medina Valley this year, but he's actually alumni uh, Medina Valley. So yeah, it's I, really I remember that name from when I was in school. Yeah, it's really cool. He uh, came in as a um, as a new physics teacher this year, and okay. I, I'm actually a chemistry teacher, so it's cool that we're in the same department. Yeah. So we get to interact a little bit easier. And um, I mean, he's he's coming out, and he's a, a lot stronger as far as like the skill of tennis is concerned. So um, he's out there really hitting with the kids and trying to get them up to the next level. So 
uh, really great to have him out there. So kind of put you on the spot like <laughs> we did with Coach Mo while ago. <laughs> What, what are your expectations? I mean, you, you, you sound really excited about this year. You've got some good things happening. You've got a couple of wins under your belt. How, how, do, you, how do you see yourself in a couple of weeks? So um, we're, hoping, um, we're hoping to at least uh, get another two wins. Um, we're hoping um, – I know that Harlan is going to be extremely difficult. Is, um, is that the competition in Harlan, the district? Well, Harlan has, uh, Harlan has a super champ. He's like number four in the state. Is he? <laughs> and, I mean, when you have that kind of player at your practice – like Absolutely. they're gonna they're gonna raise the bar um you know i mean we have amazing players but we don't have you know you know state champion players i mean we're working on it Ooh. um but you know this kid playoff potential uh, okay uh, so we're actually thinking we're thinking we're either going to come in third or fourth is what we're yeah, looking that's great. for um, so if we can steal that third spot uh that would be amazing yeah, this has been a while correct well we've been i think the last couple of years we've been fifth like yeah, every year. The notes I've seen that the last couple of years you're just under the playoff. Yeah, cutoff. I mean, and it's just because you know with the massive competition that we had, um, you know. So I think we're able to. I think we're going to get that push this year. Um, you know, like I said, I, we're really hurting on that Floresville win. I wish we would have stole that one, but wow, uh, ten to nine, right? Yeah, yeah. It was. We were literally one away. So. All right. We need, let's move on to the players. Okay. Because we're getting, we're getting a little Coach, time. Coach, thanks for, for spending some time with yeah, us. Yeah, I know. And, appreciate and, um, you guys having us on I'll here. I'll continue yep. to get updates and share them with the community out here. So y'all keep on doing what y'all do best. Yeah, for sure. And um, so this season, um, anytime we've had home matches, we actually uh, invited a snow cone truck out. So we got a Kona truck. You know, we're happy to have anybody hey, come yeah, out I mean, and watch come us. Come on um, out. The bleachers are set up. And, and you know, after today, the, the weather turns nice where you can actually sit out and watch some of this stuff in the afternoon. And, yeah, so we'll and be out there at Medina Valley. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow so 4 30 at home yeah at home tomorrow at home okay. 4 30 um go watch a few matches and you can wander over to the football field maybe watch some football and then yeah. come back and watch some more matches yep. so there's a lot of a lot of good things happening in medina valley right now Absolutely. and we'll start with tomorrow well good luck to you coach yep. thank you so thank much you. guys appreciate you oh you want to go ahead and start an interview okay you want to take a break okay so we have uh as some tennis a couple of tennis players here with today on the girls side we have miss ali shuhart on the guy's side, we have Mr. Max Leal. Allie, let's start with you. What grade are you in, Allie? I'm a junior. You are a junior. Now, I'm looking over some, some, no, some notes here. So you're, you're involved quite a bit in, on the, the girls' side and as far as the mixed doubles. So um, first, on the matches, so far, what's been uh, your best match so far that you really did really well and you're proud of so far this season? Well, Monday we played Uvalde, and um, I don't know, I don't know her name, but I played the number two girl singles. It was really difficult. We went into a super tiebreaker, and I came out winning 10-7. It was a real tough match, but is that your most exciting match so far? Yes, I did very good. That so, match. talk to me. Uh, uh, what is practice like? So you get out of school, you, you show up to the course. You want to walk me through a day of practice? Well, first, normally we run a few laps around the court, then. We do agility, stretch, whatever happens that day. And then we warm up, hit, and then on certain days we do challenge matches to, like, to see where we line up among everybody else. Okay. And then the rest of the people would do a drill, serving sometimes, down the line, cross-court shots. Just Now, do you all do the same practice. thing every day, or do you all change things up? Mondays you do something, Tuesdays you do something? Oh, well, yeah, it just depends on what the coach wants us to okay, do Okay, so you day. do change it up. It's not the same thing yeah. every day. Um, okay, great. Um, so, what, what is what is your off season like? So you you do you do fall tennis, you do spring tennis. Summertime rolls around. Do, do you do any club or you work out on your own? What what is a typical summer like for you for tennis? Well, uh, I do like tournaments on my own, or I can talk to Tyler and we do some uh, together. And there's also this blast. Uh, tournament thing in Uvalde and where you can have six player teams and so we get six people from our team and go okay. to Uvalde. So there, there is a, a, an off-season community that the, the, that you can participate in just like all the other club sports, the volleyballs and the baseballs and all that kind of stuff. So you mm -hmm. keep yourself busy with tennis, right? Yes. So w when you go, it is um, your racket. So do you go out and you have to have a specific type? Is there just something you want or is there something that, that, that coach tells you all to get? What, what do you look for when you go buy your equipment? Well, I personally get a Babolat racket, but that's just, it's like, it's player 
whatever you would. Play, player preference? Yeah. Okay, well, that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. Test I mean, them out, so. you got to make it your own, right? What's yes. the tension? Um, <laughs> 53. <laughs> that's what it is at. What, is that, what does that mean, more? The strength <laughs> of the string and the pressure. And i got another question for you, Allie. you got some shoes to fill in the family with your aunt and uncle being really good at tennis, Jeff and Trisha, and then was it Jack that was also a good tennis player, or was it uh, all, all, all of them? Jack, Pete, and Rudy. They're yeah. all state qualifiers, too. Yeah. yeah, you come from a long history of tennis yeah, players. Yeah, she does. Not to mention the, that uh, Grandma and Grandpa had a tennis court in their backyard, correct? Yes. <laughs> that you can't go wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with I that. I think everybody played on that court because it was the only one. It was better than anything yeah. that was around. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Okay, great. Well, thanks for having us, Allie, and good luck to you, especially tomorrow. And then you have what we said uh, Saturday or mo and Monday, and then Monday. Now, um, well, let's talk to Max Max Liao. Hold on, Allie. What else do you do? You do anything else? What, what else do you participate in? I'm in band. Okay, that's right. You are in band. So you're yeah. busy every Friday night. Among So you're going to do Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Monday this week. So you got a full schedule. What do you yeah. What do you play? What What instrument? Uh, I'm in percussion section, okay. but... I do like front ensemble, okay. keyboard, and stuff like okay. that. Okay, cool, great. All right, Max, what grade are you in? I am also a junior. You're also a junior. So um, let's see here. Um, what have what have you done lately? Let's see. So <laughs> <laughs> so you've had a couple of wins too. Um, so you partnered up with Maverick, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Uh, Maverick uh, Lunsman, is that correct? Lunsman. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's correct. So you do you stay with your with your partner for all the tournaments, or y'all change it up? Uh, we might actually change it up because we haven't been doing so hot like we used to. Okay. Well, then you got to find what works, correct? Yes. It's all about chemistry. It's all about chemistry. So, um, you have you participated in all the, the matches so far? Uh, yes. Okay. And so, what's your record so far as a as a um, a doubles group? Uh, jeez. <laughs> I think it might be. One, three. One, three. I okay. think we've only won one. Okay, good. Well, you got a good opportunity this next few days to really turn that around. Is that correct? Hopefully. hopefully. Yeah, you'll be fine, I'm sure. What are you stronger at, doubles or singles? Doubles, for sure. Doubles. Yes. Can't play singles that well. So right, right now, um, so yeah, 54. There's 54. Yes. I don't know how she keeps everyone's names. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. What, what is an off season like for y'all? Like, do do y'all play in some tournaments on your own during the summer? Yes. Or usually they tell us same like thing with tournaments. You. Yes. They tell us tournaments to that we can play in and register, and we can go do that during the off season right. instead of just waiting around and so waiting for the next season. Do y'all have different courts that y'all play on, or they're all made the same way, or there's some that are different than the others? What what do you even notice that? Do you pay attention to the courts? I'm pretty sure that they're all made the same way, but we do have the middle school courts, which are kind of beaten up, but we mainly use the high school courts. You mainly use the high school courts. Do they get? What do you mean? Are they the same texture? Uh, yes, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, like they're they're Just not like they're all clay, right? Is that no? They're hard. They're, it's a hard okay. surface. Okay. Does anyone still use pavement anymore? <laughs> Probably not, huh? <laughs> Okay, um, you guys got any more questions? I think we, we wasted most of our questions on Allie here. <laughs> what, what, Mari wants to know what racket you use. Brand-wise? Uh, the brand I use is Head. It's fitting for me, personal preference. Same thing as Allie. Okay. Yep, well, uh, guys, thank you all for being here. We, we really appreciate it, and it's been great talking to you all. No uh, problem. Uh, like we said, go out and, and see the tennis team tomor tomorrow. They have a match here at home, so go out and support them. Um, we're going to take a quick yeah. break, and then we're going to come yeah. back with our community corner. Real quick, yeah, just, got yeah, just don't forget, to, they'll be out there tomorrow at 4.30 yep. playing, and then, and then right after that they do Saturday, and then they do Monday again. So they've got a full schedule coming up. We want to thank um, Coach Rein Reinhardt and, and Ali Shearhart and Max Leal for joining us uh, today, and, and hopefully we can do a follow-up with you guys at the end of the season when you all are in the playoffs, right? All right, well, good luck to y'all. Good luck to y'all. We'll be right back with our community corner. You're listening to Medina Valley Broadcast Network.
Qualifications, rules, and limitations apply. Rates, rewards, and restrictions may vary by account. Contact institution for details. Tickets, popcorn, and sodas. That'll be $35. Cash or debit? Debit! I mean, I'd like to use my debit card, please. Uh, Can I do it? Okay. All right! Swiping now! What if paying with your debit card was always this exciting? Kasasa Cash Back is a free checking account that pays you for everyday debit card purchases every month you qualify. Plus, with ATM withdrawal fee refunds nationwide, that's a lot of extra cash to spend on whatever you like. Ask for free Kasasa checking at Community National Bank. Member FDIC. Double T Outfitters offers deer, duck, turkey, quail, and exotic hunts in Southwest Texas on over 20,000 low-fenced acres. They facilitate professional guide services, lodging, and fantastic meals while providing the best in Southwest hunting. Contact Double T Outfitters to find out details about their current package hunts. Contact owner Brett Ferguson at 210-413-1597 or online at DoubleTHunting.com. At North Park Chevrolet in Castorville, we offer the most exceptional experience in sales and service. Shop our large new and pre-owned selection with complimentary maintenance on new vehicles, upfront posted pricing, 10-day trade-in appraisal guarantee, and a 48-hour return policy. Our factory trained technicians will take care of you after the sale with easy menu pricing, courtesy vehicles, and a complimentary car wash with every service. Come see us at 1955 Highway 90 East or call 210-640-3184. Shop us online or schedule service at npchevy.com. Experience Chevrolet, the North Parkway. One, two, three, hit it. More coverage of your high school teams. Let's just say we keep it real. And you know this, man. This is the KMAX Sports Network. You're watching Medina Valley Sports. <laughs> this is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. We're back here at Sammy's, and we're ready for our community corner, and we are joined this week by Mr. Sylvan Mangold, and his son David is here also, and thank you for, for being here this week. We appreciate you being here. <laughs> and uh, before we get started, Jared, I want to thank again Sammy's Restaurant for hosting us here. Um, oh, it's a great host for us. We've been doing this for, this is our fourth week now, and they've always done a great job. Service is great. The food is great. Y'all come, come on out, enjoy the food, and their specials are here every day. I also want to thank IMS uh, Metal Fabricators for sponsoring the show. It's our fifth week here, so uh, it's, we're, it's going by fast, isn't it? So today for our community corner, um, if you all recall, we had Mr. Royce Grove last week, and he talked a little bit about the, the, the I guess we're calling them the old days, and we want to continue that trend. Um, Mr. Grove was here representing the, the St. Louis Comets, and we have Mr. Sil Sylvan Mangle here today, and um, he's going to give us a little bit of history, hopefully, on uh, the Lacoste Eagles. Um, for you guys that don't, that, that don't know what happened to, to create Medina Valley, Lacoste, Lacoste High School, the Casterville Catholic School, and, um, and the Casterville Public School, which are the Casterville Wildcats, all came together and created Medina Valley. Um, Mr. Mangle, thanks for coming out with us. Um, can I ask you how old you are? 82. You're 82 years young. Wow, that's awesome. Great, great, great to hear that. So, how you're, you're a local businessman. You're, you're out of Lacoste. How long have you been in business in Lacoste? Full time. Full time. And you're still, and, and by the way, he's still at it every day. So, 58 years. 58 years now wow. so far. Now, has your business been in the same spot the whole time? Yes, yes. So, tell us a little bit about what, what your business does. Well, we're in the uh, grain elevator business. We uh, sell feed for all kind of livestock, and then we're, we're big into the white corn business for uh, tortilla trade. Uh, we sell a lot of tortilla corn for tortillas and chips. We sell fertilizer, chemicals. And you also have a retail store, too. That, we that do. I have, that, we that, have a general store, too. That, that's, yeah. done, uh, that's done really great, um, I guess. Your son there has helped you quite a bit with the retail part of the yeah, business. Yeah, he sure has. Yeah. So, um, so y'all are still y'all are still going very strong there in Lacoste. And before we get going, anything I just want to, um, as far as the rest of us here, I want to thank you for supporting the local community. You're in your business. I know you did a lot for the agriculture. I know you did a lot for the kids, FFA and 4-H. Um, and and you you have a long history of supporting athletics and the sports in this community. So, I want before we get started going any further, I want to thank you for doing that. So. What years did you go to high school in Lacoste? Uh, 50 to 54. 1950 to 1954. 
Um, and y'all were the Lacoste Eagles. Has it all? Was it always the Lacoste Eagles? Always Lacoste Eagles. Now, yeah. where, where where was the high school located at? Was it? it I know we have a. Is it elementary or primary? What do they call that school? It's right. It, it's elementary. It's right there where the elementary school is. The high school was there, and also the uh, middle school. They call it elementary or in what it called. Is, but it, is that part? Is is the, are any of the buildings still there from when you were there? No, I don't know whether not they sure. destroyed the high, old high school or not. I really don't know. Uh, that was the intermediate we went to. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I went to intermediate school there. Okay, yeah. So what what were the Lacoste Eagles school colors? Maroon and white. Oh, they were maroon and white. I don't know why I thought green and white because maybe oh, because no. of the Philadelphia. Eagles. <laughs> oh no. no, maroon and white. Maroon and white. I, have, I, have, I wasn't expecting that. So, um, do you still have your Letterman's jackets? Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. now, were you like the other schools, or you got one every year? One every year. You did get one every year. Mm -hmm. do, did, do any of them still fit? Still fit. They do that really? <laughs> Holy smokes! <laughs> <laughs> so where where was so we're we're in Lacoste. Where where was where was your game field at? Uh, the, when I was in high school, the game field was just west of the of the high school. Uh, they, they built a state a, st uh, a field there, and uh, I we guess put lights up. But uh, originally, we we put, you know we played six man football. There okay, originally. so I was going to ask you that too. So Lacoste was six man originally. Well, originally six man till about uh, 47 or 48, and then they switched to 11 man football in in, in the late 40s. In the late 40s. So the football field was kind of where our, I guess we had recess yep. in, back back then, Dave, when we were going to school there. So that that was a football field way back then. Wow. So and baseball. And baseball. There was a backstop. The corn patch was the pitch. Yeah. So, what year was it that all the schools came together? Was it 63, 64? No, no. It was in the early 60s, uh, 1960, I think. It was, it was either 59 or 60. I don't recall because I was in the service at the time and and. Uh, that's that's when the consolidations took took effect. Somewhere in 1960 or 59 or 60. So did y'all practice on the on the game field? Was that practice the game field in the practice same spot? Same spot. And the baseball field, where is that located? Well, originally the baseball field was uh, south of where the old John Deere company was in Lacoste originally. And then we moved down to the river on uh, George Sensmark's property, and and we built a. Uh, well, actually, oh, really? Actually, it was a VFW, the Highway 90 League team. We played on the Highway 90 League team field. So and so, what what sports did you play, Mr. Mangle? Baseball, football, and basketball. Did them all, huh? Mm -hmm. And so, what what? They call them districts now, but who was like, was it, a, did y'all have a district or district competition? Who did y'all play? Well, we played Southside, uh, Southwest, Natalia, Lytle. Uh, so kind of local, local little city, yeah, city. Yeah, and, and uh, of course, and y'all had the big rivalry with Casterville, correct? Oh, St. Louis, yeah. And St. Louis. Yep. Yeah. Um, y'all played St. Louis and Casterville, both? Or, or no? no? No, no. We just played St. Louis. You just played St. Louis. Yeah. Okay. So, football. When you were on the football team, r legend has it that it was just mangle left and mangle right. Is that true? They just hand you the ball <laughs> and you just started rolling people no, over? No, no. I, I was really a lineman. I, I played uh, right tackle. Yeah. Oh, you were a lineman? Yeah. Well, I did play some fullback, yes. Okay. I, and That's I what did, I heard. And I did run back kickoff too. I heard some stories it was just get out of the <laughs> way because uh, I bet you were a presence coming through there so what, what were your dimensions height and size wise back in those days? Well I weighed about 195. And that was huge probably back then I yeah, would think. Yeah. And, and how tall were you? 6'1". You were 6'1". So yeah you were probably a pretty good presence coming through the hole there if you were a fullback. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah I got a question. So you uh Obviously, you were a very good athlete, but did the athletic ability of your children, did that come from you or did that come from your uh, wife? Well, that, <laughs> that's pretty tough. I don't believe my wife played any kind of athletic oh, sport. <laughs> well, she didn't. Because I know. Well, let's change the subject real okay. quick. So, <laughs> after high school, you went into the Army or did you go to college? 
Right. And I went to St. Mary's. So you went to St. Mary's first. Yes. And okay. I played. I played four years of baseball. So you at played Mary's. for St. Mary's for four years of baseball. Um, after baseball, after St. Mary's, you moved on to the military. Is that yeah, correct? I did, I did. And you went into the army. Is that correct? Right. Okay. I, I, and I played. Legend has it that you played a little football for army. I did. I did. And what uh, years were those? I just played one season. One season. Was, 59. I 59. Believe. So, wh 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 where were you stationed at, or where were you? Fort Hood in, in Colleen. In Colleen. Okay. So you were over there in Fort Hood and Colleen. That was after your St. Mary's. So you played for Fort, played baseball. And I don't think a lot of people know that you played college baseball. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And and and, I, and I've known David for years. And I actually I didn't know that you were in Army. And I found something out too after last week that Mr. Grove was in the Army. He didn't talk about it much, but uh, I didn't realize he was in the Army also. So, is, is that a typical? From your generation, that a lot of a lot of them went to the military and did military service. Well, we went through the ROTC program at St. Mary's, and and you got a, a commission, so you had to serve two years in, in service. Because you uh, went through the ROTC there yeah, at St. Mary's. Yeah. And you spent how many years in the in the army? Two. You did two, two. years in the army. So you came you came out of college, commissioned already as an officer. Right. And you were That's able right. to just jump in the army and become an officer and. And le legend also has it that you kind of got looked at for your football a little bit by some pro teams. Is that correct? Yeah, I did. Which yeah. who looked at you? Well, I mean, that's great information. Back back then, I think it was the Dallas Texans. Oh wow! Uh, that's when Dallas had two teams. Uh, my coach at Ford Hood was a uh, teammate of uh, Sam Huff. I don't know whether y'all remember Hurt. Sam Huff. And he talked me into going. He wanted me to go up. And he had a friend of his who was a coach at the te Texans. And they wanted me to come up there and, and walk on. But in the meantime, my dad had a serious heart attack. And he had a uh, business to run. Business to run. So you, your, your dad had the business for how many years? Well, he started in 1932. And... Uh, and he had his heart attack in 1960 or something or whatever that word he quit. So at Army football, what position did you play? I played linebacker and left guard. Okay, so you get, you actually played some defense. Well, I'm sure you, yeah, I'm sure you, yeah, you had to play two ways off, I guess, back then uh, yeah. uh, quite a bit, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you what? Did, I, I played two years of baseball in the Army, too. What, did what, you really? What position did you play in baseball? Right field all the You're time. Right field? Yep. Lefty or righty? Were you righty. I would assume were you a part power hitter? Uh for your size you probably assumed it to be a power yeah. hitter. You hit any over the fence? Oh a few. I hit a few, I bet you <laughs> did. <laughs> so let, let let let's talk a little bit about um, your your family. Um, your, your kids, your oldest, Cindy. Cindy. Cindy was uh, was quite the athlete, also in the Valley. Uh, she played played about every sport. Is that correct? What what did she? <laughs> mainly basketball. Ma basketball. Mainly basketball. And, and, she, and she ran track. And too. she ran track. Okay, great. And then and then came, comes along Dave. Uh, um, Dave's the oldest son. Uh huh. Um, yes. A little bit of background on Dave. Well, what did, what did he do? Well, he had <laughs> he had a good career in Dina Valley. Uh, he played uh, what you tied in, yeah. tied in Medina Valley and safety on defense, I believe. Right. And then he had a few, uh, a couple of years uh, after that. He he played at, at Rice, correct? At Rice, yeah. He played four years at Rice. Graduate from Rice University, and then we'll move on to uh, uh, your youngest, Glenn. Right. Uh, Glenn also had a, a nice football career. Uh, he played. Was it all four years at, at Southwest Texas State University? He did. And then he is coaching where right now? New Braunfels, Univer New Braunfels High. Uh, he's, he's with the Unicorns. And is he the head coach right now or offensive coordinator? What's he no, doing? He's head coach. Okay, he's the head coach in New Braunfels. How are they doing? You no, know what? They're two and two, I believe. They're two and two. Do you, do, you, do you still try to make those games? I do. Do you really? Can. Great. Um, your wife, Virginia, still running the show? Still running the show. I guess that, that's enough said right there, right? Yeah. <laughs> She does a good job of it. I love your wife. She does a good job at that. How many, how many years have y'all been married? Uh, 62. No, be 50, be 50, 50, 56. Wow. 
So tell me, give me one memorable game from your career, whether it's high school, college, or, or army or whatever. What, 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 what are you very proud of? This is what I did this game, and, and I'll remember to this day. Can you pick one thing? Well, I'd, I'd like to say uh, in, in the service we played uh, uh, the uh, Navy team from uh, Memphis, Tennessee, and it was uh, six inches of snow and sleet on the ground. Where were y'all playing at? Is that what that picture's from? At uh, Fort Hood. Oh, yeah, it was at Fort yeah, Hood. It snowed about four inches, and then that night it sleeted about four inches. And uh, I had about, uh, I don't know about, I don't know how many tackles I made that day, but uh, I, had, I had a good day. Needless to say, you were the player of the week, huh? Yes, I was. Uh, and I, I was also captain of the team. So uh, Were you really? Yeah. So do you have any memorabilia, pictures, or anything that uh, you do? Yeah, do. That one picture you have is that in the snow. That's, that's, that's in the, the, that's that's the game. game. That's the game. game in the snow. Well, that... That's awesome. I mean, you've had an outstanding career, and I don't think a lot of people know about it, and, and I didn't know about it, and that's kind of what we're here trying to do. We're, crying, we're trying to, to get the history out there. Yeah, what? we want to know more. We want to know also, not more, but we want to know about uh, Lacoste. You know, tell, tell us about uh, your rivalry with Castroville and, and, and oh, Rio was, Medina. Yeah. Who, who, got, who got the better end of the St. Louis-Lacoste rivalry when you well, were there? The, the, the whole time I was there, we, we had the four games we played while I was there, we win three, and the fourth one was, was zero to zero. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, and, and I've told you a little, little story about the last game. Uh, prior to the game, some of the uh, ex-students from Lacoste hung a banner over the river in, in Lacoste, over the river before we get into Lacoste. It was there one night. The next night, uh, some hostiles from St. Louis came down and, <laughs> shot, and shot it down with shotguns. I wonder if I know any of them. I'm probably related to them. <laughs> and, and, uh, and then that was a Friday night. Saturday night we had a dance. And Who won the game? Came, zero to zero. Oh, it was zero to zero. That's right. That's right. Okay. So they they pr produced that banner and, and drove oh, they it brought the, the banner out to, at to the, the dance. dance. Yes, and braided it all around the dance. You don't care to mention any names, would you? <laughs> uh, well. <laughs> great story, great story. That that's kind of what we're looking for. Uh, we, we we're looking for some history here, and, and uh, we're, we're we're trying to get build a good foundation of, of how Medina Valley came about. And it's for gentlemen like you that can fill us in with some of that history. And we really appreciate you coming out. Toughest player you played against from St. Louis. Toughest player? Toughest player you had to play against at St. Louis? Probably was Harold Keller. So, do, do you all still talk about those days, and, and do, you, do you have any grudges we, we, against any of those guys? We still, Calvin, Calvin Hutzler and I were on the same team, and we, when we get together, we talk about it. Uh, That's awesome. That's awesome that you can still do that. Um, and. Harold Keller is Royce's wife's brother. Oh, so we got a tie in there to last week's yes. show. Yeah. Yeah, no, that that's interesting stuff. I I've heard most of my life I hear is the St. Louis died because my family went there. So it's really interesting to hear kind of the other side of that. And I I really appreciate that we're doing this because of that. You kind of get to hear another side of the story than what you hear, you know, from from one side. It, it's real nice having that. It's interesting that we've never heard. That. <laughs> yeah. Because we live in Castorville. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. exactly. Can you tell us, uh, so when did Medina Valley start? It was after you had graduated from high school. 1960. Uh, 1960, yeah. Uh, 1960. Can you tell us about how, you know, we had talked about a little bit earlier, about how, tell us a little bit about how Medina Valley got put in the middle of the cost of Castorville. Well, like I said, I, w I was gone at, in the service while that was going on, but uh, I'd come home occasionally and, and uh, I could hear at the, at the, le the local watering holes that uh, there, was, there was quite a bit of opposition to the... To the uh, oh, really? And 
and the deal was that Lacoste district was a lot bigger than Casherville's. I mean, and uh, they had back and forth between the two groups of trustees, and at that time, from what I've, I've heard, they, they'd agreed that Lacoste would have five trustees and Cashville had four, but that's out the window now, you know. But, but that they agreed to put it halfway in between. That's interesting how it got put where it did. I, I didn't know that they agreed to do it halfway like that. I yeah. just thought it was wherever they could get land, but that that's interesting. Sounds good. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the, you got any, no, I just want to say we're, we're probably running a little yeah, we're late on long. time. We'll have to uh, we'll have to table David Mangle for the, for an upcoming show probably. But I want to thank him for bringing his dad out and Mr. Mangle. We want to really thank you for coming out and sitting down with us and sharing your knowledge and your history about the program and and uh, a little bit of history on yourself. You know what would be fun is to get guys like Royce and Sylvan and do some arm wrestling. No, oh. all here together. <laughs> let, let them talk about, tell their stories together. You know, and yep. maybe uh, Mr. Hustler, maybe we can get him to come in too. You know, and have a have a have a little powwow. That'd be that'd be fun. Be interesting. I bet we'd well, have a bunch of stories. Well, we we need to have Mark Kemp too. Mark Kemp. We'll, we'll get him. Fast. There we we'll get him. We'll, we, yeah, he's too. probably on our list too to come out here and talk. Absolutely. Then. We've got plenty of, of weeks to do this. Hopefully, and we hope that you guys out there are enjoying everything we do and 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 paying attention. Let us know. Give us some feedback on what you think about our community corner. And I want to go ahead and thank Mr. Mangle again for coming out. Yep. And um, and I think we may want to go to a break, Jerry. Yeah, yeah, we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit of sports coming up for the week. And, and thank you again, Mr. Mangle, for being here. We really do appreciate it. Uh, we'll take a break and come back. You're listening to the Dean Valley Broadcast Network. Yeah, that was good. That was, good. Yeah, that, 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 was, cool. that was painless. That's exactly <laughs> right. MV. B-N. Headed out to the game? Then make a stop at your local Valley Mart convenience store. With 12 area locations, Valley Mart is always right around the corner. Fuel yourself and your vehicle with quality branded gas and diesel, snacks and fountain drinks. Always convenient, well lit with clean restrooms. Valley Mart, family owned and operated since 1984. And a proud supporter of Medina Valley Athletics and area youth sports for over 30 years. Security State Bank has one simple goal, to be the best bank possible to the families and businesses of South Texas. We believe in superior customer service, active community involvement, fair and honest business ethics, and loyalty. We've been in Castorville for a year now, and we've enjoyed growing with you. Come by 1726 Highway 90 East, or call us at 830-538-9898. A real person will answer, because that's how we do business, with common courtesy and uncommon service. Bank online at securitystbk.com. Security State Bank, South Texas. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. From West Texas all the way to the bio and all points in between. I saw miles and miles of Texas. All this is the KMAC Sports Network, sky. bringing your teams to you. You're watching Medina Valley Sports. <laughs> this is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Sometimes it seems like banks try to make things too complex. At Broadway Bank, they're removing the complications and offering services some other institutions won't, like the all-new Broadway Bank free checking. Open it on your mobile phone in as little as 90 seconds. It's fast, easy, digital, and free. Discover the all-new free checking and other ways they're innovating local banking by visiting Broadway Bank at 1006 North Fiorella Street or call 830-538-9023. Free checking subject to approval. Conditions and restrictions apply. Welcome back here to Sammy's Restaurant. We are live here, and we just had a good community corner session with Mr. Sylvan Mangold, and we're going to move on to talk some sports for the week. Um, guys, first of all, let's talk about Medina Valley a little bit. The Panthers coming off a big win in Lockhart. 23-19 um, to 19 was the final score. We had another long lightning delay, but fortunately the Panthers were able to get that first win in district. As Marion talked about a lot, that was a huge win for Medina Valley to come out and get that opening win with them because that's going to be who's going to be fighting for that last playoff spot most likely. Well, and, and we had mentioned that the five teams that were probably going to be involved in the in the playoffs, you had Kerrville, Tyvee, Alamo Heights, Bernie Champion, Medina Valley, and Lockhart. And, and not to discredit 
Kennedy Memorial or Eve Valley, but I just, right now, I don't think they're in the same class. But you took care of business like you needed to Friday night, and, you know, we, we had a, a weather delay, which we'd had before, a lightning delay, but it worked out to where we got the game in. And, and Jared, for excitement, you couldn't have asked for a more exciting no. game. It went down all the way down to the wire. You know, your prediction, you came closest to the prediction with your 21 to 20. And people don't realize one play kept that from being true. From being pretty close to true because we ran back an extra point for yeah, two-point it conversion. Yeah, it was going to be 21 to, it was 21 to 13 when they were going to kick that extra point and you know, Lopez ran that back for two points to make it 23-13. Well, they ended up scoring another touchdown. If it's 21-14, to 14, you know, maybe a missed extra point could have finished it or it could have been a tie ball game. So that was that was a huge, huge play in that football game. Well, and we didn't actually see it because we didn't, we didn't realize. I mean, we didn't know who it was. But we found out this evening that it was Cole Modulin that blocked it. Yeah. And, and I – we – you had asked me who was it. I said, I thought it was Mr. Solis that blocked it and recovered it, but it was actually number 12, Modulin, coming from the other side. Yeah. He was coming from the right side of the formation, Solis from the left side, and, I mean, Lopez, and he picked it up and went all the way for a touch for yeah. the two-point conversion. And going back to what you were saying earlier, Maury, when we were talking about the other district competition, you know, maybe a little bit early, but... Lockhart was kind of a must-win for us. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was a very important win. We had to get that going into the rest of the district play, and, and I kind of see that as a must-win because that's going to kind of dictate what the rest of the, the district schedule is going to come out like. Well, yeah. and we talked about it, too, I, afterwards, that if Medina Valley takes care of business Friday night, you're two games up on Bernie Champion, and the onus is on them and not yourself. Yeah, it, but I tell you what, Bernie's going to come to play. Bernie Champion will come to play after the, they, they took a, a loss to us last year. They're going to be ready. The coaches are going to have them prepared for this game because it's probably been on their schedule for a while that's circled on their schedule saying, this is a game that we want to win. Well, and if they lose this game to Medina Valley, they're going to be the one fighting for that fourth playoff spot that's instead right. because they'll, be, Good point, they'll be two games behind Medina Valley then. And one thing you got to like is we had both – Coach Moreno's here with their defense, and if if the kids respond as well as the coaches did when you put them on the spot and ask them questions, you know they're going to be ready because those are probably two of the best responses we've had out of coaches so far. It seems like the defensive guys they know exactly what to say, and, and you know they're not short on words. I mean, they, yeah. they tell you exactly how it is and exactly how they well, prepare the kids to get ready to play. And the way yep. the coaches got them prepared and, and that win off Lockhart, the, 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 our team should be really hyped and ready to play this game. It, 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 as going into this game with a loss, completely different than going into this game with the win. Um, they know it's going to be a tough game, but they, they've got some momentum on their side and, and they, they feel like they can win. I'm sure they can feel like they can win right now. Yeah, and, and, No. Yeah, they got rained out just about. Right. Yeah, you're you're right. I I'm, I agree a hundred percent. Right. Yeah, it's going to make a big difference. Um, one of one of the other things is is you know you have a bye week the next week. Whoever loses this game, that's a long bye week to think about a loss. So you you want to go into it with a with a positive. You don't want to have to sit two weeks out waiting for for Kennedy. I believe that's who they play after the bye week at Kennedy. Um, so so this is going to be a big game. Yeah, and I, I would I would look for Medina Valley to come out and, and be ready to go and maybe do what they said they wanted to do against La Vega, hit him in the mouth right away, kind of stun him, which is kind of what they did last year. They kind of stunned him, and I think Bernie was kind of, hey, what hit us here? And by the time they regrouped, it was too late. Medina Valley was too far ahead of them. Right before. Yep. yep. Yeah, that's right. Grant. Yep. Yeah, that was, that was Grant. Grant yep. Snyder. 
Garrett. Garrett. <laughs> but, you know, you got to look at it, too, for the Bernie side, because every team in district is off the same week. Yep. So they're thinking the same thing. Their coaches are thinking the same thing. If we fall to 0-2 and, and then got to go through a bye week, it's going to be a long two weeks for the Chargers because I think Medina Valley – that's the firepower, and, and the defense is ready to go, and I, I think the Panthers are going to come out with a good win Friday night. Yep. Yeah, the, you know, and like you said, the defense played very well. That's kind of been the anchor for the Panthers so far this year, and the games that they've, they've won has been the defense. I would look for the ball control offense to try to shorten this football game and kind of keep it away from that higher-powered Bernie offense and kind of limit their possessions. I think that's going to be what's going to help Medina yeah. Valley. If the defense can stay exactly off the field and, and rest, you're going to have a successful game. And, yeah, yeah, and, and right down to the, the positions that we talked about with Coach, with Coach Mo is the defensive line is going to play a key part in winning this game. Hey, you know, if we get into a – a bind as good a shape as Mr. Mangold is, we go with suit self seven up at half time yeah, and get him out there. We could probably put him in a helmet still. Hey, if the Letterman's jacket fits, the helmet and the shoulder pads <laughs> will too. Yeah, absolutely. Can y'all hear me now? I think everybody nobody yeah, can hear me. Yeah, we back can hear you now. Yeah, yep. hear me now. Had the wires turned around. Yep, that uh, that headset has some weird connections different than the rest oh. of them. You never know which one's which on that. We're still <laughs> learning and growing here. Yep. Well, uh, hey, our official outfitter showed up. Yep, number one fan. Double T <laughs> Outfitters. Hey, Jared, if I may, I can, if you give me a couple minutes to give you some updates on some of the other sports that are going on that we've been following this yeah, year. Yeah, go ahead. If, if now's a good time to do it. Yeah, go ahead. We'll talk a little bit about volleyball. We had the volleyball team again on last week. They're not here this week, so I'm just going to do a quick update. Overall, the, the, the girls' varsity volleyball team is 23-6 and six now, which is an outstanding record. They're 8-1 and one in district. They're doing a really good job, and they continue to roll. Uh, Friday, they finished the first round of district play with a win over Southside, three sets to zero. And Tuesday, yesterday, they also had a 3-0 victory over Uvalde. Uvalde is the first game of the second round. So um, they, they've started out the, the second round with, with, uh, with a bang. And they're going to be off this Friday, no, no match this Friday, so they're going to get some time to rest and, and continue on with the second round um, on Tuesday. So Tuesday, on um, which is October 2nd already, they'll be playing Southwest Legacy. Um, they beat them last time they, they, on the first round. They handled, handed them um, a 3-0 loss, so it was, a, it was a fairly easy victory for the Panthers against Southwest Legacy the first time around. And then they'll follow, out, follow that up by next with next Friday on October 5th against Southwest, and that'll be a home game. Uh, we beat them three games to two, so it was a tough match. I don't remember if you uh, uh, remember us talking about that, but it was a tough match. We beat them three to two, and that's going to be our first live broadcast that we'll be doing from Panther Gym. So if you're un unable to make the game, you can listen and watch Panther Volleyball live. Absolutely. We'll stream and that game. Let me throw this in there too, Dwayne. The UIL says we cannot broadcast live video for Friday night football games, but we may be able to live broadcast video feed for the Thursday night games. For Thursday night. Kidney. That'll be great. Oh, That'll well, give a different so, perspective to yeah. everyone. That besides having the audio, we'll actually get some visual, and we'll start that out again, like I say, October 5th. Um, it'll, it'll be a home game it's against Southwest for volleyball, and we'll broadcast that live, and we're going to – we'll try it anyway. We'll see how that, how that broadcast goes. So that, that's kind of what we're going on for volleyball right now, and they're rolling along the district, and uh, I anticipate um, um, a little playoff action with, with how they're doing uh, right now. So an update on cross country. So Saturday morning, the cross country team left campus at 4.30 a.m. and headed for Corpus Christi. They ran their meet at Texas A&M Corpus Christi called the Islander Splash Three Mile Race. Um, they competed against um, over 30 schools and nearly 1,000 runners in the gold and large school division. Uh, varsity teams ran mainly against 6A competition in the Gold Division. The JV competed against a large school competition. On the girls' side, sophomore Macy Livingston, which we had here interviewed a couple of weeks ago, she finished 10th out of 182 runners with a time of 18:20, which is an excellent time. Danielle Elizondo finished with a 20:18 time in 
and Kaylee Corliss finished with a 20:34 time. That rounded out Medina Valley's top three girls finishers. The JV girls ran in the large school division, which had 282 total runners. Savannah Allen was a top Panther at 22:10. On the boys' side, Joshua Sandoval, which we actually had here also, finished 33rd out of 216 runners with a time of 15:28. Seth Hernandez was also was with us ran a 16.34, and Jose Garcia ran a 16.56. Those are the next two Panther finishers in, uh, for Medina Valley. In the JV boys race, Jason Hinojosa Ramirez uh, medaled with a 25th fastest time of 16.15. And uh, their next meet is this Saturday at Seguin. So they're having a, a away uh, meet this week, and we wish them the best of luck. To the, good luck to the cross-country team. We also, let me go ahead and go through a couple of big games that are going on in the area, football games. Uh, the Fred Fredericksburg is at Bernie High this week. That'll be a good game. Uh, Clemens is at Steel. Y'all got any picks on those games? Steel. Oh. Steel's coming off a loss to Judson. Um, Clemens? We got a Clemens from the, from the crowd. Insider information, maybe. Uh, let's see. Going on the the district, I think you know none of the powerhouses are playing. Like Alamo Heights is not playing uh, no. anybody. I think it's Uvalde maybe. I know uh, Memorial's playing. Uh, Do we have some open games them. this week? No, that, no. Everyone in the district's open on the same day. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, I was looking at it earlier what the right. what the district was. But let's uh, move into our uh, biggest matchup is Medina Valley. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Is. yeah it is. Let's move into our uh, fantasy segment with our fantasy guru. Well, everybody got your pens ready. Yeah, right. Make sure you make notes. And uh, how did our picks go, Dwayne? No. Why don't you go ahead and give us our picks from last week? Well, which which well, ones? I want to point out that Mari told Garrison on the air to pick the Browns' defense, and, and Cleveland won for the first time in 635 and days. That boy is ecstatic about that win. His defense <laughs> paid off for him too. So he, he actually won there his. There you go. He, the guru he, comes through. The guru again. came through. Came through for our our intern, and uh, he actually did well this week. So, um, Maury, what, what advice do you have for us this week? Uh, advice? Well, don't start Garoppolo. <laughs> unfortunately, he's not going to be in there. But so, uh, any surprises so far, Maury? Yeah. Who do Baker you get? Mayfield. Surprised a lot of people. Yeah, I, I, Sam Rosen su surprised a lot of people when they put him in after Bradford fell on his face and turned the ball over four times. So, do, do you see that trend continuing, or are those guys gonna gonna hit a wall here pretty quick? I see them continuing. They're always gonna hit a wall because they're young, but people are gonna game you know game plan against their strengths. But until that happens, they got to see about it. You just for reference, your quarterback. Dak Prescott, just look how he did the first year. You know, that people were trying to figure him out after they figured him out. Well, he's no longer starting for me. Uh, he hasn't <laughs> been, you know, too valuable. No, and, and I think this is a time of year in, in fantasy football where you start looking for people to, to pick up. I mean, it's time to start switching players out, seeing who's, who's not doing good, and, and see who still can be draftable and, and can get you some points. Well, and if... if Calvin Ridley is still out there. If y'all haven't picked him up on waivers, or Tyler Boyd, another one for Cincinnati. If y'all haven't picked those two wide receivers up, uh, you're way behind. Because those two team, those two players need to be rostered. Well, and you know, and there's some unexpected things that have happened too. I mean, the injuries are starting to happen now, and, and some some of the big names that have not produced, and you're getting some of these rookies that are getting playing time. They're actually getting fantasy points for some of these for, for some of these teams so I'll, i want to ask maury what what do you see are you surprised by what kansas city's done this year so far and what yes. their quarterback's done yes i am but i couldn't be more happy for the young man you know everybody you know discredited him when they got rid of alex smith saying that's the wrong move you got rid of a veteran and you're throwing a young kid out there in the fire and you know just seeing the interviews you know patrick mahomes he's a class act he don't brag among him, uh, about himself he credits the whole team, the whole organization, and he just thanks the most important person in the in the universe, God, of, of, of taking care of him. And yeah. you know that that's all you can say. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and one of the unexpected things we that that I've seen is is 
I've become a Cleveland Brown fan. You know, they've only won one game, and, and they've got a following now. That, that they could easily be three and zero. Yes, All they tied Pittsburgh, and then yeah, I think they lost up, by five points. Liquored up kicker. The, the, the kicker <laughs> didn't help them. All the wise, they, they they played a good game, and and I think they're gonna. Are they coming on national TV here pretty quick? They were they on Thursday. Were, that's right. That's what it was. A Thursday game. They were just on. Um, I, w- I want to say something before more. we're going to move on here. But I want to want to tell Dwayne runners up because you, you TSA took Texas State over the weekend. Hey, I I called it. You, you did. Win. You did call you UTSA, call UTSA, UTSA, UTSA win. That just shows you how bad our program or Texas State's program is. Doesn't say much for UTSA though. No, it was a close <laughs> game. It was a very close game. Um, Biggest surprise of the weekend, Old Dominion over Virginia. Exactly. That's that's crazy. That that, that happens about happen. every ten years. It shouldn't happen. No. And that was a backup I quarterback love, through for four hundred and ninety seven yards. It. Glad oh, yeah. to see it. That, see that, it. that puts everything that in the perspective. That shouldn't happen. No, and it so. shouldn't happen. And it almost got out done by a Sunday game. Buffalo going to Minnesota and just <laughs> totally just throttling them. Oh my. So what uh what what kind of big college games do we have this well, week? Well, you've got Ohio State, Penn State, and you've got Notre Dame, Stanford, and you have Texas Tech against Virginia. Yeah, against West, West Virginia. Virginia and West Virginia. Actually, to me, looks like one of the better teams well, in the in Big Twelve. They do, and Tech actually surprised me with how easily they handled Oklahoma State. That I, was surprising. I thought that was going to be a high-scoring game, and you know, whoever had the ball last was going to win. And Tech actually. Stop that Oklahoma State offense. They actually have some sort of resemblance of a defense, believe yep. it or not. Well, yep. Let's yeah. not forget now Texas is going to well, Kansas State. Well, I was going to say, you got people who turned off Texas after the first game, and all of a sudden the TV sets are coming back on now after they beat two top-ranked teams or two ranked teams in, in a row. So the um, excitement's uh, happening a little bit uh, over in Austin. Yeah, and, and Texas is on a roll. But you got to remember, Kansas State, is like their They've got their number. It's like their kryptonite. They've Texas their just number. cannot play against Kansas State. I don't know if it's Bill Snyder or what, but you know, hard to hard to play there, especially they, in Little Manhattan. It's tough. And I know uh, UTEP's coming to the Alamo Dome to play UTSA in conference, and I think there's a young man Dress from Medina Valley. Va- yeah, going to be playing in the Alamo Dome for right. UTEP against UTSA from Medina Valley. Well, Medina That's Valley right. grad Tres Barbosa is going to be suiting up for the UTEP Miners when they come to the Alamo Dome and play the. Our, That'll be the first conference game for UTSA that's of the our, year also. That's, that's our postcard from home this yep, week. That's, uh, that's Barbosa exactly right. Barbosa is going to be in San Antonio in the Alamo Dome playing against UTSA. With oh, his, uh, what position? UTEP Miners. I believe he, he's on the offensive line. I think he's playing tackle, but I think he's a backup right now. Okay. So, uh, But he will be there. He'll be on the sideline. So if you're there, you know, try to holler at him and show your support for our fellow Panthers that are out there at the, uh, you know, playing college ball. Well, the, the Navy and, and Orange team will win that game. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. Good one of them. Here. One of them will. Going out on a limb this going week. Going out right? on a limb this week. <laughs> yeah. Do you have – go, go, go through uh, – so the, the scoring uh, leader for this past week was – For – who are we talking Jarrett about? Jarrett had the closest oh, the score for, for the Medina Oh, Friday for the night. Medina. AI yeah, said 21 to 20 and ended up 23 to 19. So congratulations. You get a glass of water. <laughs> oh and, and, boy. And, and you know, oh boy. that's that's a four point. He, you can blame uh, Lopez, Mr. Lopez, for that because if he wouldn't have blocked that, it could have been twenty one to twenty. If Modley wouldn't have blocked it, <laughs> we could have been worrying about sitting there a lot longer than we were with overtime. Well, one of the things I want to say about the Medina Valley defense, we'll go back to that for a quick second, is uh, the two Ellison boys that. Uh, Lockhart had they were very athletic players and they were very shifty and, yeah. mo- and could move very fast and the, the defense did a very good job of containing them not letting them hit the big play I know uh, coach Moreno talked about that play in the flat they gave up that was right at the, toward the end of the game there when Lockhart scored and it was to the younger of the Ellison uh, brothers the junior yeah, uh, Daytron. Daytron instead of and, the quad. And yeah. he made a good play. And when you let those guys get loose in space, they can make big plays. And Medina Valley did a good job of not letting them do that. Well, and the difference between Lockhart with their speed and Waco La Vega, the team we played first, is they had it in the wide receivers too. And yep. they mixed up the pass in the run. Drippy, uh, Lockhart didn't throw the yeah. ball that much, so the Panthers could stock the box a little bit. And the only problem that Medina Valley had at the beginning, and you would have thought it would be to the outside, was up the middle. And then yep. they shored they shored that up, and and that was the 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 big 
thing after halftime is is what transpired and the reason that that it didn't work for uh lockhart is because they didn't throw the ball they didn't have the speed no. out on on the edge like waco la vega did and the panthers could match them up yeah they, they couldn't throw the ball that well we saw one of the only passes they threw in the before the lightning delay was almost intercepted by Cole Moduling. He just happened to come down with it out of bounds. And after that, I think they only threw two more times in the whole game. And I, I just don't think that that offense is not set up to throw. And that's where Medina Valley had the advantage in that game was throwing the football. You know, and, and we reiterated on the, on the broadcast that when they were in crunch time and had to make the, the hurry-up offense, they were running – 20, 25 seconds off the 45 or off the 40 second yep. play clock. They were not utilizing their time. They were taking their time in the huddle. They weren't in that. They had never, it seemed like they had never practiced the, the two no. minute drill. I mean, no, it, they, it was crazy how long they were taking in between plays. Yeah, they weren't ready for that. And you're right. you're going to see some difference this week. Here we go, Jared. What's your score? For the, for Medina the Valley champion game. Medina Valley game, I'm going to say. 31 to 24 Medina Valley. Maury. 31 28 Medina Valley. Jeff. 40, 42 35. 42 to 35 Medina Valley. And I already wrote, my down, wrote mine down. 28 21 Medina Valley. Uh, let's ask our community corner, N Mr. Mango. Mr. Mango and David. Y'all can work as a team there. What's going to be our score of Bernie Champion Medina Valley? <laughs> yeah, the rule is you can't pick the other team. What do you say? Close game, high scoring game. What do you feel? 30 to 19, Medina Valley. Uh, I've got some tragic news. My, my girlfriend Shannon's sitting next to me. She went to Bernie Champion. Oh. And she just whispers in my ear, go Chargers. Like, that that's not allowed. You Jeff, have to please. go sit on their side on Friday night. It's a good thing you have to work. you got to take <laughs> you got to take care of Francine Friday night. I think they have, they have some dishes for you to wash back there, I believe. <laughs> oh, and those are my. after you eat at Sammy's. you got to wash your own dishes. Yep. <laughs> and uh, with that, we're, we're going to go ahead and uh, wrap things up. Uh, thank you all for joining us here this evening. And we will we will be here next week. No, we, no, won't. we won't be we here won't next be week. Here we're going to with the off week. We're going to be off also. Um, I'd like to remind everyone to tune in this Friday night. Um, we will be live. Bernie Champion in Medina Valley, seven thirty kickoff. We will be on the air at seven o'clock. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mangold, for being here with us again. And thank you to Sammy's Restaurant for making it possible for us to be on. And also to IMS Metal Fabrications for also uh, helping us put these broadcasts on we appreciate it um so for Mari, Dwayne, and jeff and merle back at the k vibe studios i am jared lucky saying good night and god bless and we'll see you friday night when panther football continues